Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you to the Let's Play episode of Repeat Remake, Sissel's Path. So y'all, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome awards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Hopefully Philip saved the day. Alright. But, your friend! Someone came in to rescue me, and they're still in there! They both turned back towards the dark building behind them, still thick with shouting and piercing gunshots. Owen hesitated for a moment and looked as though he was fighting the urge to run to the warehouse himself. He'll be fine. He risked his life to get you to safety, and he trusted me to get you out of here. Herschel felt a wave of guilt and awe at the inside of his chest. You kids, you shouldn't be risking your life for someone like me. This is my problem. Oh, don't you start with that. Sissel is our friend, and he's going to completely lose it if he finds out you died for such a dumb reason. Sissel is better off without me. Herschel's words were cut off as Owen shot him in an intense glare. That's not your decision to make. Do you honestly think he'd be better off mourning his family for the rest of his days? Do you have any idea what that feels like? Herschel was stunned. Hey, Get on the fucking bike. They both jumped as another gunshot rang out, this time much closer than before. They turned to see the shrewd th th thug sprinting out of the warehouse breathlessly, his gun raised and a murderous glint in his eye. Nobody weasels their way out from the Lorelei family's dealings. You're going to regret the day you were born, Herschel McDermott. Herschel didn't need to be told twice. He hastily crawled onto Owen's motorbike and they shot out of the parking lot out of sight. The motorbike hurtled down the narrow road like a speeding bullet. The path ran precariously along the edge of the Bradley Lake, and as much as Owen wanted to throttle the gas further, he had to take care and avoid careening off the road into the dark water below. He could feel Herschel grip his shoulders tightly as the man peered at the warehouse retreating in the distance. Your friend, is he going to be all right? Owen gritted his teeth and forced himself to focus on the road. Philip's a tough guy. I'm sure he'll be fine. After he dropped Herschel off somewhere safe, he'll come back and find Philip. And then he's going to yell at him so hard about how stupid this plan was that his voice will turn hoarse. He'll be back. A loud rumble of a car engine abruptly pulled Owen out of his thoughts. Suddenly they were enveloped by the sharp glare of headlights beaming them from behind. Owen glanced back into the blinding light and could just barely make out the silhouettes of the shrewd thug scowling furiously through the windshield of his sleek black car. More gunshots cut through the night air. Owen swore loudly and veered the motorbike left and right in an attempt to become a more evasive target. He felt Herschel's grip on his shoulders tighten as they both struggled to stay upright. Holy! Is he really chasing after us like this? How are we supposed to escape? Behind them, the thug was leaning out the window of his car with his gun trained directly at them. Even through the blinding headlights, Owen could see the man's bloodthirsty grin as he tried to shoot them off their unprotected motorbike again and again. They were like sitting ducks. Maybe Philip was right. He really should have just rented a car tonight. Another bullet pierced the air and just narrowly missed Owen's ear. He swore under his breath and swerved the bike into more erratic maneuvers. How were they going out on the, how were they going to get out of this one? It was only a matter of time before they got hit. In the rearview mirror, he saw the thug once again carefully take aim. Before he could line up the shot, another pair of blinding headlights flooded their vision. This time it was coming from the front. Of the car? This time of night? But it was enough. The fly, the bright flash threw off their pursuer's aim, and thankfully the bullet sailed far above its intended target. Owen squinted through the sharp light as he struggled to stay on the road. There was an oncoming rusty old truck approaching him in the distance. The thing looked absolutely ancient and held together with duct tape and a dream. Was it just another random person on the road or someone working for the Lorelei's? It was hard to believe someone would be in this area of town at this time of night. As it got closer, Herschel suddenly piped up. Hey! Isn't that my truck? Time seemed to slow as they craned their necks to look into the oncoming truck as they passed by. Ah! Wait a sec! Cecil? <laughs> the fuck? I glanced over Cecil's shoulder from the passenger seat as an ugly orange motorbike whizzed past us, my brain hardly comprehending what we just saw. We had followed, Mor we had followed Morse's instructions and borrowed Herschel's dinky old truck to the location he sent us. But I didn't expect to run into trouble before even arriving. Uh, if my eyes aren't playing tricks on me, that was Owen and Herschel, right? I think so. I can't imagine anyone else willing to ride a bike that looks like that. The two of us jumped as gunshots ripped through the night sky. 
Ahead, we saw a sleek black car barreling to the, barreling down barreling down the opposite lane with reckless speed. Luckily, Herschel's fossil of a truck was busted with its high beams permanently turned on. We made ourselves public enemies of the city during our ride here, and we managed to glimpse the driver's face. Hey, isn't that the debt collector with the dumb hat from this morning? And he's got a gun! I can't believe Boss actually came here tonight to- Ugh, what a fucking twat! Sissel swore loudly and slammed on the brakes. After fumbling with the stuck shift controls for a moment, he veered the truck around in a U-turn and began chasing after the two fleeing vehicles. I gripped the edge of my seat nervously as our truck's pathetic engine groaned at the speed Sissel was, forced to re was, for was forcing it to reach. Thankfully, this road was rather narrow, with long, winding turns as it traced Bradley Lake's perimeter. The two cars ahead of us couldn't have gone too fast, even if they wanted to. Sissel managed to catch up to them in no time, and his and his furious glare his furious glare locked onto the sleek black car with its gun-wielding driver. As we approached, Sissel let out a holler and slammed on the gas pedal. Our rickety truck surged forward and slammed into the sleek black car, sending it swerving out of control. We could hear the debt collector shouting profanities at us as he struggled to regain control of the vehicle. Damn, y'all, this is thrilling. All right. Sissel took his chance to accelerate past him. He rolled down his windows. We slowly built up enough speed to pull up next to Owen's still-moving motorbike. But Owen! Boss! <clears throat> Owen, boss, what the fuck do you think you're doing? Hey, don't look at me like that. We just found your boss getting beaten up by those debt collectors, so we decided to grab him and leave. Sissel shot Herschel with a look of disbelief. The older rabbit shrunk back and hung his head low. We can talk about this later. Hurry up and get in the truck. It isn't safe out there. I glanced behind us. The headlights of that debt collector's car were quickly approaching. It didn't like stopping would be an option. Owen frowned and circled his bike around so that he and Herschel were perpendicular with the passenger door of our truck. Open the door and take your boss into the truck! I gulped and hesitantly pushed the door open. The, the buffeting winds of the road immediately roared against my face. But what about you? I'm going to go off-road and go back to that warehouse. Philip is still back there and I'm not leaving him behind. Philip's there too? We were interrupted by another gunshot, a stray bullet bouncing off the truck's rusty metal. It seemed the time for chatter was over. Thank fuck this guy wasn't a very good shot, I thought to myself as I struggled to keep the door open. Owen nodded and pulled his motorbike as close to the passenger door as he could manage while we all continued hurtling down the road at high speed. Herschel gulped nervously as he leaned forward from his seat on the back of the motorbike, arms outstretched as he prepared to jump. I could feel Sissel's gaze over my shoulder as he anxiously tried to keep the truck steady. Dude, be careful! Get a little bit closer before you- Another bullet sliced through the air, this time cracking the glass of the door. Herschel let out a yelp and made an unsteady leap forward. He managed to grab onto my outstretched hand as he threw himself as hard as he could over the gap. But he didn't, didn't quite make it. The world slowed to a halt as I watched Herschel begin to slip down towards the rough blur of the pavement below. Somewhere behind me, I could hear Sissel let out an anguished shout that cut deep into my chest. No. That wouldn't do. Thinking quickly, and maybe without thinking at all, I seized Herschel's arm and yanked as hard as I could. I threw my entire body weight into it as I pulled him into the truck. Herschel landed on the passenger seat with a thud while I fell forward and tumbled out of the open door. For a moment, the world was a blur, and I thought I was going to faceplant to the cutting pavement below. Owen's arm shot forward and grabbed me by the collar of my shirt. I could barely breathe as I clung onto him as hard as I could. He was yelling something as he struggled to keep his grip on me while his motorbike veered dangerously off-center. Owen was forced to slow down to regain his balance. I watched as the truck continued barreling down the road without us. Adrian! Sissel's panic shout faded into the distance as the truck disappeared into the night with a murderous black car following closely behind. Oh boy. Sissel's knuckles had turned white from how tightly he was gripping the steering wheel. Beside him, Herschel was panting loudly as he struggled to slam the passenger door shut. <laughs> I think I saw your friend grab Adrian before he hit the ground, and that duck collector ignored them and kept chasing after us. He should be okay. Second y'all. Sissel let out a breath he didn't realize he was holding. It was one less thing to worry about at the very least. Now there was just everything else. He glared at Herschel, the storm of emotion that had welled up inside him the entire day suddenly spilling out. Did you really plan to turn yourself into those murderers tonight? Oh, oh excuse me. What were you thinking? Oh, look who's talking. Kids shouldn't even be here. I was worried about you, you fucking twat. Do you have any idea how scared I was when I went back to the cafe and saw that you took all the cash out of the place? I have no idea why Owen was out here tonight, but thank God he was because I'm pretty sure he'd be dead otherwise. 
I was doing what's right, and it's what I should have done a long time ago. The last thing I wanted was to pull you into my mess. Well, too fucking bad. I'm here now. You're not getting rid of me that easily. And I'm not going to let you off your off yourself just with some with something stupid right after I find out that, you're, that we're related. A torn and weary look filled Herschel's face as he, hugged, as he hung his head low. Honestly, says that you're better off without me. The whole truck shook suddenly. They both whipped around to see the thug's car ramming them from behind. Either he had given up trying to shoot them through the truck, or he had run out of bullets. They could see the shrewd thug glaring at them from his windshield as he slammed on the gas once more. The rusty truck's frame rattled and groaned from the impact. Cecil frantically scrambled to maintain control of the wheel as the thug's car shoved shoved something. As the, blah, as the thug's car continued shoving them from behind on this narrow road. He's trying to push us into the lake, Cecil thought, right before an ear-splitting metallic crash ripped through the truck. He had fully lost control, and the truck had barreled through the railing off the narrow road and over a sheer cliff overhanging the lake below. Cecil's breath hitched with nausea as their entire world tipped at an angle. Almost in slow motion, the truck fell forward and plunged straight into the cold, black water of Bradley Lake. The truck sank like a rock and rapidly disappeared under the water's surface. On the road above them, the shrewd thug climbed out of his black car and scanned the scene warily, gun at the ready. He watched as a torrent of air bubbles boil, boiled at the water's surface while the truck plunged ever deeper. His fingers wrapped tightly around his gun's trigger as he scanned over the lake. If they were still alive, he would make sure to finish them off. The family would not be happy with him if he left any loose ends. He stood over the lake for what felt like an eternity, until the air bubbles slowly pittered out and the surface was calm once more. The water was black as ink and it was impossible to see anything within those depths. However, if anyone attempted to surface from the lake, he would spot them in an instant. He waited for at least another ten minutes. Far longer than anyone would survive without a breath of fresh air, but still nothing. Satisfied, the thug holstered his pistol and began making his way back to his car. <sighs> this night turned into a goddamn mess. He, left, he let out a sign and drove off. Far below, the world disappeared for Sissel as soon as they hit the water. In the dim glow of the truck's interior lights, he could see the windows were littered with cracks with tiny waterfalls pouring inside. There wasn't a hint of light from outside the truck. The world was just an endless span of black as the truck continued to sink further into the depths. Sissel's head was throbbing and something wet and warm was trickling down his forehead. He must have hit his head on something during, in during the impact. Everything felt foggy as he tried to undo his seatbelt and push against the doors. They wouldn't budge an inch. The water pressure was trapping them inside. Ugh, oh, my head! Cecil blinked through the daze and tried to take in his surroundings. Beside him, Herschel was frantically bashing against the glass and searching for a way out, but no luck. He tried rolling down the windows, but it looked like it had stopped functioning. They were stuck here. Cecil shivered as he felt the water inside the truck slowly pull up to his knees. Well, fuck. Boss, you alright? Herschel gave the window another futile bash before sinking into his seat, dread overtaking him. I'm fantastic! Everything's just great! You don't sound very fantastic. Of course I'm not! Herschel hung his head low. Everything I've done, it's all been for nothing! Nothing I've ever done was worth a damn! I've only managed to make things worse! I just, just wanted to at least leave you, leave, leave you out of all the problems I've caused, but I couldn't even do that. I told you already, I'm not letting you do anything stupid, boss. Sizzle stared up at him softly. We're family, right? I know things have been kind of a mess, but I still care about you. I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it from you, and God knows I didn't deserve it from your mother. I... Herschel let out a raspy sob and buried his face in his hands. Alright, y'all, I'm gonna pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway... If you, uh, before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze-tier patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver-tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. And thank you to our gold-tier patron, Amr. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for submitting to Ultimate Tier anyway. If you all want to get your names in the credits, get access to our Not Safe for Work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!